well, so I just spent four weeks uh, in Erasmus Island in the high Arctic uh, in Canada, so very far north, uh, more north than Baffin Island, uh, as north as can be pretty much. So, uh, so I was working for the Rangers at the Canadian, Canadian Armed Force uh, Arctic Training Center to help out with uh, the uh, training of the regular uh, armed force. Arrived there mid January during the polar night, and uh, yeah, so everything you do there is pretty much in the dark and uh, by a minus 50 kind of temperature with extreme winds. got to see and do stuff I never did before, so it's really good for uh, my own uh, uh, training. Triple globe. <laughs> <laughs> What was the hardest to keep warm? The face. The face is a weak link for sure. <laughs> uh, we sometimes need to wear up to three belly clavas or three layers on your face just uh, so it doesn't freeze. So you have belly clavas, face masks and uh, goggles of course. And it's still a weak link. This is pretty bad, especially because we are, of course, riding a lot. We're patrolling here and there all day. And yeah, the, the face is exposed to extreme temperatures. And then uh, a tiny little uh, piece of skin showing, and there go, it becomes white and frizz. So it's, it's pretty tough. You, well, tough. You have to be very careful. And of course, uh, the people who were. Uh, uh, managing us uh, knew that, and so we started by very short uh, outings, uh, just to, to so we re so we can realize, you know, even doing a two hours outing, you realize, oh my gosh, <laughs> next time <laughs> I need my third belly clava or <laughs> some things like that. So uh, on, uh, one of our first outing was to go and uh, uh, just for a few hours to. Um, a famous a kind of famous uh, crash site uh, near Resolute Bay uh, Hamlet, and uh, it's, it's a nice, very nice ride. And there is there, there's a plane crash from the, about the 80s with a plane who succeeded in, in um, emergency landing in the in the tundra, and so the the plane is still there. Nobody had died during the incident. It was in summer, so people had had, had been uh, rescued, and the plane is in one piece and it's kind of a nice eerie uh, uh, sight there especially in the semi polar night at that by that time we started to have like some kind of light uh, about a couple of hours a day the sun wasn't up yet but you know like but not very far from the horizon and we had a couple of hours of of uh, of daylight kind of daylight 
So it was a, a, a nice, a nice, uh, nice outing for sure. So great news, Canadian Armed Forces are using uh, Skidoo 2024 Scandic White Track uh, 600 EFI and it's a great mission. I mean I always wondered about that 600 EFI and it's, it's a great PP uh, engine, I mean it's, it's, uh, the power is adequate, it's, it starts okay by minus 40, uh, okay-ish, I, I think it wasn't as good as our four stroke when it comes to cold start, uh, a great little mission, I uh, really liked it. It's daylight here for now, still a polar night for now, until uh, another 10 days. So that's as much as the best light we're gonna get uh, for now. Just a few inches of snow on top of the ice, and the snow is just extremely a hard pack. It's, it's harder than that. And uh, it's, it's, it's rough. I mean, it, as much as it's a great experience, uh, it's rougher than on our legs, I'd say. Mostly because there's no snow, and, it, and it's rarely completely smooth. Uh, something also why it was rough, and most of the riding, whatever it was inland, on the sea ice, were always rough because there's not much snow on, on top of the rocks in land, so it's really rocky. On the sea ice, it's really smooth, and also it's so cold that uh, the snowmobile suspension are kind of frozen, so the, the, the shock absorbers in the Pogo suspension are, do, not, do not move, it's too cold and the back suspension is very limited, so uh, it is rough because of that, because of the extreme cold and, and, uh, the, and the lack of snow, everything is hard, I mean, it's much harder than that, the snow doesn't give much. The difference to minus 45, riding by minus 45, let's say, with wind, and we had that sometime in the Yukon. It's not, it's not very common, but you know, once a year you have that still. And riding in there, I think it was harder because there was no sun at all. Then here, even if it's minus 45, eventually the sun is, the sun is up, and it's most likely if it's cold, there is sun, right, in the Yukon. It's rarely overcast when it's that cold. And then, of course, you're absorbing uh, invisible uh, light and heat, you know, uh, from the sun. So if you're out of the shadow, it might be minus 45 in the shadow, but in the direct sunlight, you, 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 you're getting hit by infrareds and uh, ultraviolet kind of light that, you know, warms you up. Then there, there is no sun at all. So when it's minus, 45, it is minus 45. <laughs> you are in the shadow, <laughs> for sure.
face is exposed to extreme temperatures. Actually, at the first outing, most of us got a little piece of skin freezing on the uh, on the face, uh, the, the cheek, the frost, the frostbite on the on the cheek and on the nose. Well, no, not deep, of course, but you know it gets white and then it peels off, like a little bit like a sun tan, a bad sun tan. Nothing more than that, but still, it reminds you that every detail matter. And then, uh, you, yeah, so you, you start by short outings until uh, finally, uh, when you're ready, you can you can go on your snow machine all day and patrol and uh, not getting hurt. But still, like, it's really tough.